Off a day, everyone. I'm Nestor Lacanto with the Pacific Daily News. Here are our top stories from the PDN Newsroom. Three days before a three-way Democrat delegate primary race, candidates Michael Sanicholas and Ginger Cruz squared off over economic issues and border security at a Wednesday afternoon debate sponsored by the Guam Chamber of Commerce. Senator Amanda Shelton did not accept an invitation to the debate from the largest business organization on Guam, the members of which provided the questions for the debate. Republican delegate Jim Moylan, running unopposed this year, watched the debate as a member of the audience at the Hilton Guam Resort and Spa. Candidates were asked what they would do to get military subsidized shipping to Guam to help reduce the high cost of goods. St. Nicholas, who's vying for his old seat, said the first step would be finding a price point for such a subsidy, which would allow Guam to get the temperature for support of a subsidy in Congress. He said he was open to exploring the possibility with chamber membership. Cruz, a former federal official, said she's been exploring the idea of getting an essential sea service designation for Guam to subsidize the island for being a hub for transshipment throughout the region. In other news, total early votes cast in the 2024 primary election are down about 35% compared to the 2022 primaries. Based on data collected by the Guam Election Commission, there's no word what, if anything, that will mean for voter turnout come Election Day this Saturday, as the Election Commission does not make any hard projections of turnout. That's according to GEC Acting Director Tom St. Augustine. St. Augustine said GEC staff always prepares for 100% voter participation ahead of any election. Some 3,450 votes were cast early in this year's primary, according to St. Augustine, which is lower than the 5,291 seen in the 2022 primary. Local small businesses should have a greater opportunity to enter into contracts with the federal government for the current military buildup and beyond. That was the main point of Governor Lou Leon Guerrero's Tuesday letter to Under Secretary of Defense for Acquisition and Sustainment, William LaPlante. Leon Guerrero strongly urged the Department of Defense to maximize opportunities for Guam's diverse small business community. Vera Tapasna, the executive director of the governor's community defense liaison office, said on Wednesday, billions of dollars are coming in. Everyone knows it. We want to promote our local businesses. Tapasna said one recommendation would be for the DOD to limit the common practice of bundling large contracts so that instead of a single large mainland contractor winning a huge deal, small local companies could bid on the unbundled contract work. There are more than $11 billion worth of anticipated military expansion projects planned for the next five to ten years on Guam. That's according to the Guam Post of the Society of American Engineers, which is hosting an industry forum on November 14 and 15. DOD is also working on a 360-degree missile defense system for Guam. In other news, Senator William Parkinson introduced a bill that would ensure fentanyl and methamphetamine dealers would be charged with murder or manslaughter for overdose deaths. Parkinson's Bill 333-37 comes on the heels of Governor Lou Leon Guerrero's recent public statement about fentanyl-related overdose resulting in seven deaths in the last four years. The new bill is aimed at amending several sections of Chapter 16, Title 9 of the Guam Code annotated to address the escalating crisis of illegal drug use and distribution on the island, particularly involving highly lethal substances like fentanyl and meth. Currently, Guam law already classifies the death caused by Schedule 1 drugs like heroin, LSD, and cannabis as aggravated murder, murder, or manslaughter. Parkinson's bill would include Schedule 2 drugs as well in the definition of aggravated murder, murder, and manslaughter, including meth and fentanyl. For more on these stories, go to guampdn.com and follow us on social media.